Hey guys, welcome to your general timeless pick a deck reading. Okay, so deck number one, we are going to have green adventuring, and I'm going to show you the cards for this deck one. So this is kind of what they look like. Very beautiful. One of my favorite decks. Okay, gives you a little bit of an idea. Okay, deck number two, we have citrine. Raw citrine. And this deck looks like this. Very beautiful as well. Okay, and then deck number three, we have pyrite. Lovely fool's gold, right? Hey, I'll take that fool. You know, fool's a leap of faith. Brand new beginning. I'm on it. <laughs> okay, so deck number three. We have more of the photo type tarot. So whatever you prefer. Okay, so those are your choices. And... I will see you on to whichever you choose. Please know if you're new at this, just use your intuition. What do you feel drawn mostly to? And it's absolutely okay to feel drawn to one or all three. Okay, deck number one. Let's go ahead and roll. Holy Spirit, Holy Divine, all who are with me in the highest divine realms of love and truth. I ask that you please give me the most important information for those who are choosing deck number one, please, Spirit, for this timeless general reading. Thank you, Spirit. This is the most important information for deck number one. Here. Thank you. Okay, and this is deck number one. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot going on around you. Uh, it's like you are sitting. Mm, I see. You're a hybrid between a rabbit and a human. Your eyes are kind of droopy. Your ears are drooping. It's almost giving me the feeling of almost like uh, someone looking through a window outside when it's a very rainy cloudy day and they they have this sad expression on their face uh now here's the thing you know with the eyes drooping so it could be some kind of you know i don't really want to say a tower moment but some kind of situation here where um there's been some kind of maybe grief or loss this could be a loss of a job it could be uh, a loss of a person some way somehow um take it how it resonates but some kind of loss or some kind of feeling like some kind of heart hurt i almost instead of heart hurt i almost want to say like my heart sank that kind of feeling like something that's not like pure gut wrenching wrenching but more like a just some kind of something that Something didn't go as planned or something like that for some of you. Um, but I do see people around you in the background. A, a lot of people. Now beside you, I am seeing uh, a little child. Now for me, a child is normally representative of some kind of business, work, project, and it can sometimes mean an actual person. It doesn't have to be a child, okay? But it's just saying that there's there's something, because it's so close to you, that's not going right. Some of you, this could actually be a parent-child relationship where there's something um, that maybe hasn't been going the way you had hoped. Um, however, Spirit is now showing me that you are smiling. You are looking at this project and your ears are no longer drooping and your eyes are wide open. And it's almost like it stopped raining 
the clouds went away and the sun has came out on a situation. Very beautiful. Now, I am seeing with these people in the background, again, these people are kind of at a distance. So this could be physical distance or emotional distance. So when I say emotional distance, you could still work in the same atmosphere with, you know, co-workers. Or you could still live in the same vicinity, the same home or something like that, uh, you know, with a spouse or family member or something like that. But emotionally be detached okay um so i'm seeing this group of people here i'm not really seeing that they're looking at you so much it's like yeah a few of them are however it's almost like for an example, let's say you have a workplace job and there are many there that talk and argue amongst each other. OK, they, they talk about each other as constant gossip and you're that person that tries to stay to yourself more, tries to not become involved in that environment. You just kind of like an attitude of, OK, I'm here. I'm going here to work. I'm, I'm here to make my money. I'm not coming here to get involved in all this craziness. That's the kind of feeling I'm getting here. But because you are focusing, I, it, I'm hearing a loner. So there's something here. You're a loner or you're keeping secret. So I'm getting two things here. For some of you, it could be that um, you are working on some kind, uh, you know, working at some kind of job or involved in a group of people family members whatever they're doing their chaos gossipy type thing okay you're over here not involved in what they're doing you're kind of like in your own little bubble okay and you're determined that because you have this child at your side this project okay or this situation that you want to nurture to grow to adulthood you're putting all your focus on that, okay? So it's kind of like distancing yourself emotionally from, you know, even if people are talking about you, regardless of what it is, distancing yourself from not even caring about what they're gossiping about or, you know, trying to cause some kind of chaos about. And you're putting your focus into what's making you happy. And because it went from feeling sad uh, to this happiness and the sun coming out, I feel like spirit saying that as long as you, you know, not allow those distractions in the background to affect your um, energetic space and focus on what makes your heart sing, you're going to be very pleasantly surprised of the results that come from this. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the symbolic cards spirit holy divine please give me top two cards top two cards for those who have chosen deck one please those who have chosen deck one top two cards please tell me when to stop now okay thank you and what do we have we have oh okay and the second one is Positivity. See, there you are sitting over there, distancing yourself from the chaos. Okay. Now, look, what this card symbolically means for me, you see, there is this one weed that is growing actually where it shouldn't. Okay. It's, but it's growing right in the center of this stump, right? In reality, it should be somewhere around the stump, not growing up through it. And so what I intended this to mean is you growing something. This could be business. It could be love. It could just be, um, you know, better healthy habits for yourself. But you growing something to maturity from a place where it shouldn't even grow. So amidst all that chaos, normally... 
uh, it would be really hard for someone to distance their self emotionally from that. Um, but here you are and you're actually doing this and you are actually growing in a circumstance or situation where you really shouldn't be, but it's happening. Okay. And I feel like Spirit's saying, as long as you keep your perspective positive in this situation, um, not allow these distractions, that you are going to be successful with whatever uh, the meaning of this child is for you in your life. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the tarot. Spirit, Holy Divine, please show me, tell me, or both. The most important information. Thank you. First card, we have two of swords. Thank you. Please give me more. Give me more, please. Clarify this two of swords. Those who have chosen deck number one, please, spirit. Most important. Clarifying the two of swords. Thank you. Yeah, we have the world. Very good. Give me more, please. Clarifying the two of swords and the world. Thank you. Okay. All of these? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Give me just a moment, please. So this one I'm going to keep separate because of the way they fell out. And I'm going to keep these together. Okay. So we have the Six of Swords. We have the Empress. I am loving this. Okay. Reverse or upright? Reverse. Okay. What do we have? Four of Pentacles in reverse. Very nice. Oh, we have the Knight of Cups. This is awesome. Okay, reverse or upright? Upright. And we have the Queen of Pentacles. Okay, now this card that came out kind of as a loner is the Nine of Wands. Okay, so give me just a moment here. Okay, so what I'm getting is with this Two of Swords, as you can see in this deck, it's a little bit different than the usual original tarot. Um, so with this, you have a package here. And, you know, you see that you have swords that are on the ends here. Now, this person has their eyes closed. They're not seeing something clearly. They're not seeing um, what's within this package. They know that there's something here. They're hoping that there's something here for them. But this person can't see, okay? They may be able to feel the package. But until they actually use these swords to cut open this package to see what's inside, they're not seeing a full situation here. And so what i'm getting it's almost like not seeing a way out of something in order to obtain this gift so this gift could be again whatever is the meaning of this child in your life okay now with this diet of wands in this deck um the company accidentally but yet not accidentally sent me to nine of wands cards and um so there's one that, of course, is this one. It, this person has their clothes on. The other one, the person, is the same card, same person, but this person doesn't have any clothes on and is full of scars. So I intended this card in this deck, um, this extra card, to mean that you have already gotten to the point of taking a break from some kind of wound. It is the wounded warrior. So it's kind of like going through a situation, needing to take a break, needing to rest, recuperate, because you have, you know, it's like not giving up. You know, you've got just a little bit longer to go in a certain situation. Now, an example of this would be, um, let's say that, you know, you are 18 years old, and, uh, you know, you're getting ready to, in two months, you're getting ready to move out on your own for the first time in your life. You're so excited. You can't wait. Uh, but, the thing, but the reality is you have to wait, okay? You know that it, you have to wait that two months um, to get that 
apartment all of your own for the very first time in your life. So during this two month wait, um, you know, you you may have felt like, you know, living at home um, during this first portion of the cycle. Some of you may have went through some kind of trauma, traumatic situations or um, and, you know, this remember, this is just an example. But some kind of traumatic type situation and you're just like, oh, I cannot wait two more months and I'm out of here two more months and I can live my own life, you know. And so it's like getting to this place of, OK, I need to rest because I know when I get out on my own, it's going to be all on me. So I've got to make sure that I'm rested now, um, even though I may not be in the atmosphere surrounding me. Uh, that is the best for me at this time with all the people that I saw, right? Um, but I know that as long as I get myself to that place to where I can find my own peace, protect my peace, uh, rest and rejuvenate, that once it's time for me to move out from this home into my, my own space, I'm going to have the rest and rejuvenation that I need needed and um and also knowing that this cycle is soon coming to a close because at you know after the end of the number 10 that's when the cycle actually ends so we're at the number nine so it's like just a few more steps a little bit longer it's almost done and then you have the world card the world is literally the ending of a cycle it's the ending um of the the journey in the tarot okay so it's like literally the very last of the the major arcana cards so um it's talking about you know you, you come to this ending and then there's this bright new beautiful beginning that takes shape okay it's about birthing something new now the interesting thing is here you also have the empress now we'll get that to that in a moment but there's also that same meaning within the empress card okay so the six of swords that's moving to calmer shores that's you know you in the original deck uh you know you'll see people uh that uh that you know they're in a boat and it's like part of the water's choppy part of it's really smooth and they're in like this little john boat and the, the boat can be doing this sometimes and uh, you know not knowing you know how rough the water is going to be and then sometimes they're getting into smoother water so it's kind of like a back and forth just not knowing until they actually get to where they're going to see how things will be but they're hopeful that things will be better where they're going now so any type of new uh, journey that you're going on here um so in the example i gave you earlier it would be like uh this person they're they're in hopes that once this chapter is closed and they move into their own place um they're in hopes even though they don't know exactly how things are going to turn out they're really hopeful that it's going to turn out to their highest good and they're going to be very happy. They're going to be successful, things like that. OK, now then we have the Empress card here. Now, again, this Empress um, has many of the meanings that I already said about the world card, um, about ending a cycle, birthing something new here, because you can see the Empress. She is expecting a child. Um, but also, you know, the Empress is all four queens combined together into one person and so we're talking about an energy of you know unconditional love compassion very nurturing very loving also for herself uh, this is a person that really puts herself first not in an egotistical manner but in a way so that um, she can be at her best so she can be at her best to help others as well okay because we all know if we just give and give and give and, and i've been one of those people when i worked healthcare, um you know i gave and gave and gave of myself and i couldn't say no 
And I exhausted myself so much that um, it got to the point I, I didn't have anything to give. You see, I was I was just so ran down. So um, that's what this Empress is about is, you know, learning to stay grounded, learning to stay in alignment, learning to listen to your body, um, realizing that, you know, what is it that you want to create, taking action towards that and uh, making sure that you start creating, giving birth to something new. Some of you could actually be a literal child um, that you are going to find out that you um, are conceiving or uh, some of you may have or getting ready to have uh, give birth of a child. Uh, now we have the four of pentacles in reverse. So this is telling me that actually that the financial, uh, any kind of finances that you've had that may have felt restricted. Again, remember I saw you looking out a window, half rabbit, half human. Okay. And you look sad. Now, remember, think about this. A rabbit is symbolic for me of luck, quick, very fast abundance. You know, something, something uh, multiplying quickly because rabbits multiply quickly, right? Um, so it's a very positive in this situation, a very positive meaning. Um, so it's like it's telling me here that in the past, um, you know, you may have really been having to, you know, have some kind of uh, like a, a struggle, having to uh, hold tightly on to, you know, your finances or um, maybe not get the things that you really felt like you really would enjoy having. And I feel like that's why I was seeing you looking out the window, you know, with the clouds, the rain coming down. But then all of a sudden, this little child appears, which is a project or, you know, it could be a person, but something you're wanting to nurture and put all your blood, sweat, tears into and take action towards to grow. And as you do that, what's happening is it's, it's like freeing up some kind of financial restriction that you've had um, or that you presently have. And it's going to free that up for you to where you're going to actually have a, because you're doing something with your heart. Okay. This empress is allowing her heart to guide her. Okay. And because she's uh, taking care of herself, putting her needs first and allowing um, her heart to guide her with whatever this child means. Um, it's like there's, this focus on I don't have enough or there's barely enough to cover the needs. It's, it changes the focus. Okay. And all of a sudden, because you will begin to see because you're, you're happier, you're, you're allowing your heart to guide you that all of a sudden things start beginning to work out in your favor even more so. And then we have the Knight of Cups. Now, for some of you, this can literally be a person if you're looking uh, for a romantic relationship. Uh, this could be someone coming in towards you uh, who could just, you know, literally be this person that is, you know, your your dreams. OK, someone that you would just really um, love to have as an addition in your life. Now, if it is not a, a romantic partnership you're looking for. This could most certainly be, uh, you know, a business partner, a mentor, uh, a new friend that you meet. Uh, but there's definitely some kind of beautiful energy coming in here with this Knight of Cups. Now, also, um, this person is on a white horse. Now, for me, uh, for a, a horse in general is considered freedom. OK, uh, breaking free. And I feel like, again, where you have the four pinnacles in reverse, breaking free from some type of financial restriction here. OK, um, now also uh, I'm getting I'm really getting the feeling here that there is something and this could even be uh, whatever this child was in vision um, because. 
something like if it's a project, something that's divinely guided because this is the cups and this is like being intuitively led by spirit. And you see this person has wings. So there could be some kind of either a message or a person. I know it's not a page, but I'm feeling message or a person. So it could be like a spiritual download um, that you receive on, you know, it could be in dream form. Uh, it could be, you know, if, if you have clear audience, you could hear spirit give you information. Um, however, you uh, get signs, synchronicities. But there's something coming in here that's going to kind of like shine a light on your path as a verification of yes, following your heart. This is something that is fated for you to do or this is something that you're being divinely guided to do for your highest good and then we have the queen of pentacles again i definitely feel like this is something financial or has to do with finances that will better your finances whether it's just the simple fact of being happier Re, you know, focusing on something that you have a lot of passion and um, something that is really, you know, like if you like to sing and when you sing, you feel like the rest of the world's not even there. It's just you and your heart and you just, you know, just really, you know, putting, putting the, the, how should I say this, putting the love of everything you have within you into this song right and you hearing the beautiful words that are coming out of your mouth and the beautiful um what, let's see what am i trying to say here the beautiful um well just the beautiful sound just to make it simple i was trying to go somewhere else with it but spirit spirit's not it kind of taking it from my mind um so but the queen of pentacles here um this is also you know making sure that you stay grounded during this time as well and again it's another clarification here to do what makes you happy that's what she's doing here she's she has a certain craft uh, a hobby that she's doing here and she's you know this hobby is allowing her to stay in the moment She's not, she's not sitting here thinking about, oh, I don't have enough. Oh my gosh, you know, no, no. She is in this mindset of, you know what? I am a creator. I'm going to follow my heart. And today I want to make this, I'm going to create this. And while she is sitting here creating something beautiful and her heart is all in it, What's happening is this is telling the universe, hey, um, this person's creating. They're they're not worried about, they're not thinking all these thoughts about what if. They're simply right here, right now, creating something that is making them happy. Okay. And when we do that, the universe is like, oh, well, let's give that person more of that energy. And then that's where more flow begins to kick in into your life. And I really love this for you, deck number one. Let's go ahead and get a few oracle here. See what spirit, see what else spirit wants to tell you. What else spirit would you thank you? Commitment. <laughs> I told you marriage, promises, fidelity. So again, some of you, there could be this commitment coming in towards you um doesn't have to be marriage you know but um definitely someone that is very interested in you and you know again if you're not looking for a romantic partnership um it could definitely be someone who is you know like a business partner um that kind of thing as well um uh, a new job really wanting to hire you because they see the value of your skills um be you know hearing news that you've been accepted to some kind of college or something that you've really been uh, trying hard to get into, just things like that. But this is just beautiful. Okay, Spirit, what else would you like to tell deck number one, please? Thank you. Hold on. One flipped over here. Reverse or upright. 
upright. What do we have? Bitterness, resentment, anger, hurtful words. Yeah, I feel like that's that is this two of swords and this nine of wands energy um, from the beginning here. I definitely feel like, you know, and I saw the group of people, which could be family members, etc., cetera, um, who were just, you know, chaos, talk, whatever. And I feel like, again, Spirit's just reminding you here that, you know, with this cycle ends with this, when it gets to the Ten of Wands and at the end, and you start all over, okay, that Spirit is wanting you to see that what is coming, Deck One, is going to actually be something that is just something that's divinely led. Um, something I feel like for many of you, Spirit wants you to understand that this is a situation that you needed to go through so that you could see and you could figure some things out here for, you know, kind of like using the, the lessons learned as tools to move forward for your highest good um, for things that you may encounter later on in this lifetime. Okay. But please know that, um, you are coming out of this situation here of the people that you are around that has this type of negative energy. Okay, any more from this deck, Spirit? Yes, okay. What else would you like to tell? Thank you. These, yes. Clinging, holding on, obsessing, spying, withdrawn, single, lonely, solitary. Yeah, okay. So what I'm getting here. Some of you, I'm getting two things. Some of you, this could be a situation where um, this was some kind of, it doesn't have to be intimate, but some kind of love relationship here um, that ended in some kind of where you just had to, you had to walk away because I saw you alone this group of people were in the background but i definitely see that some of you now again i said in two different ways so way number one i'm seeing some of you um still mentally maybe reliving the thoughts of the past these this past group of people the past hurts the past traumas um, they feel a little stuck, okay? But then again, um, on the flip side of things, um, this withdrawn and this clinging, holding on, obsessing, spying, could actually have to do with this person. If this is a romantic relationship uh, coming towards you, uh, this could be someone who, again, who has... Um, they found their match. They they see within you what truly they would be looking for in an intimate partnership. Something that is long term. Something that would be something that this person would definitely want to commit to. Okay, and this person could be withdrawn. Okay, this person could have went through something. Uh, close to what you've gone through. So it may be just a little while because, you know, for some of you, this person may still have their thoughts. They may still be healing from something from their past. While at the same time, it's almost a feeling like uh, if you're on social media or if you work uh, in some kind of external business, away from the home someone it's almost like a feeling where some of you are actually helping someone else heal just by being in the vicinity of your energy because you are coming across as some some of you are like this healing energy and you may not even realize it for someone else that's what i'm getting here this is very beautiful 
Okay, Spirit, let's go ahead and go to this last deck of Oracle. What guidance would you like to give? Deck number one, please. Is it this one? No. Okay. What guidance for deck number one? Thank you. All right, what do we have? Puffin, partnership. I kid you not. I cannot make this up. <laughs> it says, accept yourself and your colorful colorful personality. Feel confident about being you. You are a joy bringer. Let your community nourish and protect you. Ask for help. Teamwork will give you the best results. Cannot make this stuff up, guys. This is absolutely incredible. All right, I'm going to leave this here. Deck number one. And may you have an extremely blessed and lovely day, my friends. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, this is for deck number two. Let's go ahead and begin. Holy Spirit, Holy Divine, all who are with me in the highest divine realms of love and truth, I ask that you please show me, tell me, or both the most important information for deck number two for this timeless reading, please, Spirit. Thank you. Here. Okay, thank you. And who is representing deck number two, please? Okay, well, what is this person doing? It looks like you're writing something. You have both eyes open, which is telling me there's some kind of clarity. However, this is very interesting. You don't have a mouth. But you're writing a message. You're writing something here. So this has something to do with communication. Now sitting on top of your head is a beaver. Give me just a minute. I'm going to look up the spiritual meaning of the beaver. Hang on. And I do recommend that you do so as well. Because this will be your spirit animal at this time. For the situation. Okay, so this is just the AI overview. In Native American tradition, the beaver can symbolize creativity, cooperation, persistence, harmony, and hard work. It can also teach people to be productive, use available resources, and understand teamwork. Now, you are standing alone. Um, beavers are known for building dams across rivers using sticks and earth, and they can also alter their environment in a sustainable way to benefit their families. The beaver can also represent wisdom because it uses its natural gifts wisely for survival. In dreams, beavers can also have a symbolic meaning. The details and emotions of the dream can help the dreamer interpret its meaning and gain insights into their subconscious desires, aspirations, and challenges. Embracing the beaver's qualities and symbolism in a dream can inspire the dreamer to work hard, foster teamwork, seek emotional balance, and appreciate the beauty of the world around them. Okay, wait. Spirit, there's another one here. Okay, so Spirit brought me back to this. This is uh, blog.catchingahouse.com. Um, and it says, The beaver spirit animal is believed to be a staunch reminder that the diligence, patience, and determination with, deter I'm sorry, with diligence, patience, and determination, you can achieve anything. So that's what Spirit wanted me to let you know about. Okay, let's go ahead and go to some symbolism and word cards and see what Spirit has for you. Spirit, Holy Divine, please give me the top two cards for those that chose deck number two. Please tell me when to stop. Top two cards, please. Tell me when to stop. Here. Okay, thank you. And we have, all right, very nice. So we have a path leading up. And we have 
great things never came from comfort zones. So spirit asking you to step out of your comfort zone here. So there's definitely some kind of situation that you're getting ready to rise higher. So this could be just an example would be a job uh, placement where you may uh, have put in or been thinking about uh, training or something to get a higher position um, and receiving that as long as you step out of your comfort zone and decide, okay, this is what I want. Remember, I did see you writing something. So that could be for some of you filling out some kind of application. Um, but definitely something here about communication. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the tarot. Spirit, Holy Divine, please show me the most important information for those that have chosen deck number two, please. That one? Yes. Okay, what do we have? King of Wands, very first card. King of Wands. Okay, Spirit, let's build on this King of Wands, please. What is the most important information for deck number two? Thank you, Bees. Yes. Reverse or upright? Upright. And we have death. Okay. And we also have Seven of Cups. So I feel like here with this King of Wands, we have a situation. Spirit, is this King of Wands? Is yeah, this okay. This is for this is you. So this is your energy. So with the King of Wands, you know, this is someone who's very bold, uh, straightforward teacher, some kind of leader, like supervisor type role. Um, could be an owner of a business, but for me, that's more emperor. I feel like more like supervisory type. And even if this doesn't have to do with jobs, um, there's some kind of energy here of taking on a leadership role within something that you're interested or thinking about doing. Now there's some kind of death of a situation here. And it's, I feel like it's due to, you know, with the seven of cups, some kind of cloudy judgment, having a lot of options, but the, most of the options are not mm, top picks. Uh, I'll put it that way. And it's like I've, I'm feeling with this King of Wands, you know, this is this is also for me a card of, let's say, for instance, it is a supervisory role. It would be a situation of this would be some kind of passion of yours that you would just really be a go-getter and go after. But you've been in your head about something here. Too many options. Not knowing which one would be best for you. Not knowing which one to choose. Okay, Spirit, give me more, please. What do we have on the bottom? Knight of Cups. So for some of you, there could be someone coming in. If this is love-related, um, this could be someone coming in uh, to your energy, wanting to make you a love offer here. Someone who would be um, kind of like someone who would just uh, come into your life and kind of, you know, um, well, I guess like sweep you off your feet, but it's more than that, I'm feeling. Um, some kind of like a, a deep cup of love to give you that's full. Now, if this isn't love related or intimate partnership, I feel like, you know, I, if, let's say if this is a job situation, 
I feel like Spirit's saying with that Knight of Cups, it's like you have all these options here with the Seven of Cups, not knowing which way to turn, not knowing which option to take, or should you take any of them. But you have this death and rebirth going on here. So I feel like what's happening here is with that Knight of Cups that was on the bottom, it's kind of like um, seeing that there were no good options with this Seven of Cups. Like you literally being given the prime of options. So what this could mean is, is let's say, you know, you've put in applications at several different places. They're not really your cup of tea, but they're out there. It's money. Um, it's not something where you feel like you would be living your passions. And then all of a sudden, here comes someone, um, you know, like let's say a business owner, for example, comes to you and says, you know what, I would really like to hire you for uh, a certain project. And this offer is a full cup. This offer is something that you're very uh, emotionally tied to or like, uh, you know, some kind of drive or passion that you would have to work on this project. So take that how it resonates in your life. But it's definitely like reviewing, having some kind of awakening here and seeing that all these options it just didn't work. They really weren't options, if that makes sense. Awaiting for the, the, the right one, the one that is, again, a full cup. Here, give me more, please. This is the most important information. Yeah, spirit brought me back to great things never came from comfort zone. So I feel like these these are or were comfort zones for you. The same old thing, the same cycles repeating. Yeah, we have the world card. So what I feel like here. There's definitely a, something something coming to a completion here. Okay, give me more about this world card, please. Let's clarify that world card. Thank you. Reverse or upright? Okay. What do we have? Two of swords. Yeah. So, again, there's something here that you may have been going back and forth about. Um, not realizing a way out, a way to move forward. So it's almost like you've chosen to close something out because of not seeing a way. Okay. Spirit, give me more, please. The world and the two of swords. Thank you. What do we have? Reverse or upright? Upright. We have Ten of Pentacles. And we have Reverse or Upright. Reverse. We have the Lovers in Reverse. So yeah, there's something here that you have chosen to end. And it definitely can be some type of relationship, you know, as far as intimate partnership, uh, family, close friends, something like that. It doesn't have to be, though. It can also be just meaning being at a crossroads. It is almost giving me a feeling here of where you're ending a cycle here. You're ending something. Because you can't see a way out. But 
this situation, I feel like you want, you really want this Ten of Pentacles, which is completely happy life. You know, it could be financially, it could be with love, family, good friends, you know, um, it could be legacy money, inheritance. But I feel like here, this is like your dreams coming true, okay? That's what you wanted or are wanting. But then there's this crossroads here. I feel like I feel like there's definitely some kind of shutting something down, stopping something here. Because this could be some of you ending cycles, some of you coming to this, you know, waking up to this realization of you keep repeating patterns and you're bringing it to a close. Some of you, the patterns could actually have to do with intimate partnerships. Okay, Spirit, give me more, please. What else would you like to tell deck number two about this? Yeah, there's definitely something ending here. And I do feel like it is... cycles you want to you want to end cycles things that you know are no longer good for you okay reverse the upright right and we have eight of swords here you are again victim mentality stuck feel stuck reverse the upright upright queen of wands so see you have the king and the queen of wands there are divine counterparts here now, for some of you, this could just be, you know, finding a good masculine and feminine balance within yourself. But I feel like for most of you, this is the actual king and queen of wands counterparts. So you're coming through as the king of wands. So, you know, and this is not gender specific. So I feel like since the queen of wands came out with the eight of swords, you feel stuck. It's like you feel like. Like you want the Queen of Wands. But it's almost like not being able to see how to get there. Whatever the Queen of Wands may mean, you know, that could be a job. It could be a school you want to go to. Some kind of project. Okay, what do we have here? Yeah, the tower. Reverse or upright? Upright. Two of cups. I'm telling you, you can't make this stuff up. Yeah. And the knight of pinnacles. Okay. Who is this knight of pinnacles? Someone else. Okay. So there's someone else coming in here. Okay, so what I'm getting here is being tired of the same old, same old. Okay, being tired of having the same options just over and over again. It's, they're not good options. They're okay. Some of them are not good at all. But I'm feeling like the best of the Seven of Cups is okay it's just okay it's not this ten of pentacles that you want that you're striving for but you feel stuck and you have this divine counterpart whether this is a boss whether this is uh you know an intimate partnership a family member whatever you have someone here that you are or a situation that you're wanting to move toward but you're not seeing a way you feel stuck which is causing some kind of tower moment within yourself i feel like it's an internal tower moment because i really feel like with this two of cups you really want this partnership you know it could be a business partnership you but you really want this 
but you just don't see a way. And then Spirit said, the Knight of Pentacles is someone else. So it's like there is someone new coming in the picture here. Now, Spirit, is this Knight of Pentacles, is this someone coming in for the King of Wands? Or is this someone coming in for the Queen of Wands? Queen of Wands. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, so thank you, Spirit. So then, because you feel stuck, no way of really that you could see to move forward towards this Queen of Wands. Now there's this king, I'm sorry, this knight. I, I don't know if I said king. There is a knight of pentacles showing up here. And that's very, very slow moving energy. But there's someone coming in towards this queen of wands. And it's like there's some kind of, I'm feeling some kind of fear here, which is causing this internal tower moment within you or is going to. Worried that this Knight of Pentacles, although it, this Knight is like the slowest card in the deck. You're worried that if you cannot get to this person or this job or whatever in time before you can figure something out, that this Knight of Pentacles is going to attract this Queen of Wands or this Knight of Pentacles is going to get that job, whatever this is. For some of you, it could be a situation, and I'm not feeling like this is for everyone, but just for a few of you. I feel like it could be a situation, let's say um, you are attempting to get all of your finances in order before you come toward this Queen of Wands, okay? Um, because you know you're done or you want to be done. You may not be done with the cycles yet, but you want to be. Your goal is this Ten of Pentacles. Happy home, happy life, right? So for some of you, you know, it's kind of like you could be thinking, okay, well, I, um, in order to get to the Queen of Pentacles, I mean, because look, look at all of this. Yeah, and I've just got confirmation with the phone. Look at all these obstacles to get to this Queen of Wands. It's like you know this Queen of Wands is the Ten of Pentacles for you. The happy the happy home, the happy life. But getting there is the problem. So some of you, it could be a situation of, okay, I need to make a certain amount of money. Or I need to um, walk away from this job and find, you know, make sure that I have found something better. So that I can come into this relationship with this Queen of Wands. But in the meantime, if you've got this slow moving person coming towards this Queen of Wands. So then you're like, oh my gosh. Now what am I going to do? Am I going to accomplish this in time before this slow moving night makes it to this Queen of Wands? Which is causing this internal conflict. Again, that's not going to be for everyone. But I feel like it is going to be for a few. Okay, Spirit, give me more, please. What is, what is the most important information? Very interesting. Okay. Nine of Pentacles. Okay. So, Spirit, give me more about this Nine of Pentacles. Is this Nine of Pentacles about the Queen of Wands or the King of Wands? Queen of Wands. Okay, so you're seeing this Queen of Wands as a Nine of Pentacles. Um, so basically someone who uh, is, it's like a pre-Empress energy, someone who uh, is very grounded, someone who really um, takes care of themselves, someone who puts themselves first. Um, so that, you know, that they can make sure that their cup, I know it's a pinnacle, but their cup is always full. And then they have a little bit left over. And what they have left over, that they make sure, you know, that 
they give their cup of love, even though I know it's a pinnacle, but it's just an example. They give their cup of love um, what they can afford to give, whether it's financially, whether it's energetically. So you're seeing this Queen of Wands as this person who is well-balanced. Who really um, is different from any of these other options with this Seven of Cups. You see the value. Ace of Cups, yeah. So I feel like Spirit's saying here. You can see how there could be a huge, huge brand new beginning. This big cup of love with this Queen of Wands. Now, again, it doesn't have to mean a part, you know, like a, a love relationship. But there's some kind of big, beautiful... Mm, What's the word? Heartfelt beginning that can happen with this Queen of Wands. But this night, this slow moving night. And if you can see, I'm not sure if you can, but this night is looking up in this direction. <laughs> Literally looking up towards this Queen of Wands. <laughs> Excuse me. So it's like. It's like, so there's someone that has their eye on this Queen of Wands, but again, they're very slow moving. But it's like, I feel like the pressure is on. <laughs> I truly see and feel the pressure is on to do whatever you have to do to get to this Queen of Wands before this Knight of Pentacles reaches this Queen of Wands. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I feel. I have to say it. Okay, Spirit, give me a little more. Okay, thank you. All of these? Yes. Okay. So we have. Okay. Reverse or upright? Upright. Okay. We have the King of Cups. With eight of Pentacles. And three of Pentacles. Very nice. Okay, so I feel like deck number two, that for the overall outcome here, if you choose to overcome these obstacles and you truly want to be in connection with this Queen of Wands, regardless of how this Queen of Wands fits into your life, it's going to require you to take on the energy of this King of Cups, which is someone who is very, um, they're very honed in on their emotions. Because again, I feel like with this King of Wands, I'm getting this, you know, this energy of just like nervousness. I know the, uh, the Nine of Wands, I'm sorry, Nine of Swords did not come out, but I'm feeling that energy from this situation here. And it's like spirit saying, if this, if you choose to continue, you're going to have to be in this very uh, emotionally stable, very grounded type energy. And you're also going to need to depend upon your intuition and move with your heart instead of being so much with cloudy judgment so much in your head and it's going to take with this eight of pentacles it's going to take a lot of work here a lot of dedication and you know the three of pentacles that is a card of teamwork so you know it may even require you um asking assistance from other people to get over these challenges 
maybe in a more productive manner or a quicker but effective manner? Okay, anything else from the tarot? Okay, Spirit is drawing me back to the Three of Pentacles. Let's clarify this Three of Pentacles, please. I just felt a an electrical volt. Okay, Five of Wands. So we definitely have some kind of conflict here. Give me more. More clarification. For me, the Five of Wands is kind of like a tug of war. But I feel like it's more emotional. Now, for some of you, it could be that, you know, like where this is a card of teamwork, it could be that there are people that's having different ideas. So like this person pulling you here and this person over here is giving you this idea and someone over here is giving you this idea. You see what I'm saying? And are they the right idea? Is it going to work? But it's definitely some kind of tug of war. Okay, please clarify this five of wands and three. Thank you. What do we have? The moon. Yeah. It's definitely like some kind of mystery here. Illusion. Definitely, I, I'm, I know I keep saying it, but I'm definitely getting like too much thought in the head here. Um, needing to remove any illusions about the situation. Seeing it for what it is and just going towards it. Because it almost feels like to me how can I explain this spirit? It's kind of like the feeling of um, I'll use myself for an example. I'm a happy son and I strive for perfection. Now is what I do perfect? No. it's Perfection is not possible in the 3D realm. However, um, I do strive for perfection. Okay? And a lot of times what happens is, um, because I do that, it puts me way behind on doing things because it takes more time. Instead of just doing this reading and whipping it out, you know, I could I could just do this reading and not give you examples. I could just do this reading and not include these. You see what I'm saying? Um, that would make things happen a whole lot faster. And I feel like that's what's going on here is being too much in the head. Um, striving for some kind of perfection here for whatever this queen of wands is, whether it's a person, a job or whatever. Um, when you could just go straight to this Queen of Wands as you are right now and you would be perfect for the job. You would be perfect now for whatever this is for this person if it's a, if it's a love interest. But you don't, you're not seeing that. And I feel like that's what Spirit's trying to tell you here. Remove the illusions Get out of your head, look at the situation, and realize that it's worth, instead of having to go through all these obstacles, it's almost like self-imposed obstacles. A lot of self-imposed obstacles here. When you could just go straight to this Queen of Wands and get it over with. Okay, let's get some Oracle. Okay, Spirit, Holy Divine, please give me more. What is the most important information for those that have chosen deck number two? Most important, please.
Thank you. What do we have? Influences, attachments, third parties, peers. Yeah. Okay. So for some of you, there could actually be people. You had the three of pentacles, teamwork. So there could actually be people. And with this five of wands, a tug of war, that's, you can have people that's saying, no, don't do this or pull you this way and say, well, you better do it this way. But, I, you know, you could have people that's saying, I would stick to what you know. But what you know doesn't make you happy in this seven of cups. What you know is you want this ten of pentacles and you want this queen of wands because you know this queen of wands is going to give you this happy family, this happy life somehow. But then you've got these people here that are saying, no, 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 no. Try this person over here from this cup. I think this person would be a better option. And then you've got some, you know, somebody else over here that's saying, no, don't, don't go with this queen of wands. You don't know anything about this queen of wands. Stick to what you know. Stay in your comfort zone. Okay, give me more, please. When Spirit's clearly telling you, giving you guidance to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah, nourish, self-growth, self-focused, soul-finding. Yeah, and okay, so here you go. And Spirit's telling you here, it's going to be very important to go within and allow Spirit to give you the answers that you need not these influences they're giving you the wrong information here i'm almost getting like this is some kind of divine faded type lesson or something that you're supposed to be doing but you're allowing or have allowed other people this could be family members friends co-workers to sort of talk you out of something that's faded Ooh. because spirit's saying you're supposed to be rising up spiritually okay give me more please a little more for deck number two Thank you. And we did have one that flipped. Hold on just a moment. Here it is. Time. Waiting. Cycles. Moments. Exactly. Cycles. Okay. And withdrawn. Single. Lonely. Solitary. So, yeah. This King of Wands is, you know, it's like feeling lonely. Wanting that connection regardless of what it is. Wanting this Queen of Wands. And you feel like you keep wasting time with the Seven of Cups. With all these options that just, they don't fulfill you. They don't bring you this Ten of Pentacles. Okay, so what should those that have chosen deck number two, what guidance can you give them? What do they need to do about this situation? Besides not listening to external influences. And this one was flipped. Okay. Oh my gosh. Divine masculine. I'm telling you, this is something that is divinely faded. That something you're supposed to figure out a way to get to this queen of wands. And it says open heart, receptive, empathy, vulnerable. And spirit wants you to, to lead with your heart. We already said that with king of cups. Open your heart. Okay. Let's go to the next oracle and draw just a few. Okay. Spirit, Holy Divine, give me the most important information, please. Most important guidance. Okay. Thank you. Here we have Sea Otter, happiness. Be the master of playful living. Release expectations and enjoy every day. 
Let worry go and instead choose love. Surrender to the waves. Your good destiny of love is sure. I can't make this up. Spirit's telling you to go to the, king, the queen of wands. Go straight towards it. Don't overthink it. Don't feel like I'm not ready. Don't feel like, you know, I've got to have all this in place. Because what's happening here is if you wait too long, eventually this knight of pentacles, although it's the slowest energy in the deck, your fear will happen. I mean, it will. That's what I'm getting here. This knight of pentacles will catch up to this queen of wands. And this queen of wands will be like, you know, like if it's a job, for instance, the, the hiring manager is going to say, well, you know what? I've been waiting for six months for this king of wands to be ready to accept this job. And I'm not hearing anything from this king of wands. So the knight of pentacles is here. So I feel like I'm just going to go ahead and hire this knight of pentacles. And then you've lost out on something that was supposed to be because of allowing other people and allowing yourself to stay too much in your head, being logical and not allowing spirit to guide you, not trusting and having faith in this connection. And also, you know, with the external influences, it's like a, a tug of war constant with, with you from other people that are close to you. Okay, I'm going to end this here. You know, I can't tell you what to do, those of you that have chosen deck two. But um, what I can say is, um, if, if this was me and what I chose, I would go straight to this queen of wands. Um, I wouldn't worry about any of the other stuff because I know that when there's something that's divinely guided, as long as I listen to spirit, because, you know, I'm one of these people that used to, I used to listen to people and it has screwed my life up. Okay. Until recently when I took took hold of my life and allowed spirit to guide me. So now I know because spirit has never lied to me. Human beings will lie to us. Human beings will mess up. These people could have the best intentions for you. However, it doesn't mean they're giving you the right information. Okay, so by myself learning that, now I do exactly as spirit guides me. And again, spirit never lies to me. So I trust spirit. So that's the only advice that I can give you there. But I can't, I can't tell you what to do. Only what I would do. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Much love to you. And I really hope and pray that you make the correct decision. Uh, what is best for yourself on your journey. Much love. Hey, guys. Okay, so those of you that have chosen deck number three, um, we're going to go ahead and begin with that. Holy Spirit, Holy Divine, all who are with me in the highest divine realms of love and truth. I ask that you please show me, tell me of both. What does those that have chosen deck number three need to know most for this timeless reading, please, Spirit? Thank you. Here. Okay, and who is representing deck number three? Okay. Ah. Okay, so what I'm getting here, you're making some people, I don't really want to say shocked, but you're making them kind of eye, you give you the evil eye here because you're doing something great, okay? Um, I see you 
and it's like you have this doll. Now, this doll is representing some kind of project, business, some kind of idea um, that you have that you're putting all your focus on because it's like you're holding the doll out in front of you and it's like you have both eyes on this doll. You see something clearly. So you have some kind of vision that you want to create or you want to uh, grow to maturity, okay, like you would a child or uh, because it's, this doll is actually, it literally looks like a child, but it's not, it's a doll. Uh, so something that you would want to grow. Now, behind you is like this group of people. So this could be coworkers, it could be family, it could be a group of friends. Um, but there is definitely a group of people giving you the evil eye, okay? But again, your focus is not on them. And I feel like Spirit's telling you not to focus on them um, because they see that you are focusing on creating something amazing. Now, for some of you, they may not even realize what you're creating. They may not. It may be something you haven't told people. It could be secret. <coughs> Excuse me. Or um, it could just be plainly, um, you know, they're not in your uh or you're not in the group per se now because there is a little bit of distance here for them to be in the loop to know what you're doing. Because, again, you have your back turned towards them and you have this doll that you're holding out. Now, the way that you're standing holding this doll, um, there's no way that these people behind you would be a spirit grabbing my finger. Where are we going, spirit? There's no way that these people would be able to hear. Wow. Okay. Spirits want me to go do things a little bit differently, but there's no way that they could see around you to see the doll. So they couldn't, they wouldn't be able to see what you're working on unless you've told someone. Okay. All right. So spirit guided me directly to this deck of cards. So we're going to start here. Spirit, what are you wanting to tell those that have chosen deck number three, please? What do you want to tell the most important here? Why did you guide me to this deck? Thank you. Possibilities, free spirited, adventure, risk. So there's definitely something here, Spirit, saying you need to take a risk on. Now, anytime that I say take a risk, this does not mean to do something silly. With your finances, okay, you know, never, ever, ever leave a job unless you have already been hired at another one ready to start, okay? Never, I, you know, never invest all your money or in, into one basket, okay? Um, so be smart about it. Okay, Spirit, give me more, please. Thank you. What do we have? Cloudy judgment, illusions, unbalanced and distorted. Okay, give me more about this cloudy judgment. Because I know that Collective did have both eyes open looking at this doll. Sorrow, loss, grief, depression. Okay, and what else do we have? Exhaustion, depletion, drained, long journey. Depth, awareness, importance, and value. Is this recent past? Is this this group of people? Yes. Okay. So here's what Spirit's saying. So this group of people, and I'm seeing that your back is turned towards now. I honestly feel like they were energy vampires. Okay. Um literally depleting your energy i feel like you gave a lot to these connections and you couldn't see things clearly um it, their energy the expression on their faces shows me a lot of drama a lot of chaos a lot of gossip so i feel like being around that group of people brought in a lot of illusions And it brought in a lot of 
um, like a signs and symptoms of a depressive type energy. But it required you to go within. You had to go deep within alone. You had to walk away. And you had to find your own importance, your own value in this situation. Okay. Give me more, please. Oh, Spirit wants me to switch decks. Okay. So do you want me to start back with this one now? No. This one? Okay. So we're going to go straight to the tarot. Okay. We will do that, Spirit. Spirit, please give me the most important information. Most important. What are you trying to say? What do we have? Queen of Swords. Yep. Definitely getting clarity on a situation here. I feel, again, it's that group of people. Please clarify this Queen of Swords. Okay. This one? Three of Pentacles. Yep. Okay. So, there's definitely a group of people here. Because Three of Pentacles should be, you know, like teamwork, people that are like passerbys, seeing you, you know, uh, use your gifts, talents, skills, and like be very uplifting and encouraging to you. But I feel like even though it's an upright, I'm intuitively feeling with this Queen of Swords, you have to speak your truth. You have to go within or or, or you're getting ready to go within alone. To find your worth, to figure out actually what, what do you want? Do you want to create something your own? Something amazing, something that your heart is in? Or do you want to stay in this click over here that's not even good for you? That is that, like sucking you dry somehow, whether it's your energy, your time, your money. Okay, give me more, please. Three of Pentacles, Queen of Swords. And I really feel like you've really had to stand in your truth here. You've had to voice or you're getting ready to voice to this group of people that this just is not going to work. Okay, give me more, please. Because you have your focus 100% on this project or this person, whatever this doll would be for you. Thank you. Yeah, Ten of Wands. This has been very heavy because I'm feeling heavy. It's like a very heavy energy here from all this crowd of people, These all these people. Everyone wearing a mask. Okay, give me more, please. Tell me about this Ten of Wands. Okay, thank you. Seven of Pentacles, yeah. Yeah, so basically Spirit saying you, you're getting to the point or you have gotten to the point of where you had to look at the situation with this group of people. And it really could be co-workers for many of you with the Three of Pentacles. But you're looking at the situation and you're like, look, this is really depleting my energy. I have no time for myself. I have no time to, you know, do what I want to do. I have no fun anymore, you know, whatever the case may be. And I'm always having to do what this group of people expects me to do. So you're really looking, you're taking a, a huge look at what is best for you. And that's where this taking a risk is coming in. Taking a risk of walking away from that to bring you to your happiness so that you can grow what you want to grow. Okay, this one. Yeah, Six of Pentacles. And I feel like this is a two way here. I feel like, on one hand, you feel like uh, with this group of people, it's like, because this is a card. 
of breadcrumbing, you feel like they have breadcrumbed you basically. Like you give and give and overgive and overgive to the point you're just ran down or you're or you run out of money or whatever. And they're not giving back anywhere near what you've been give, putting out. And at the same time, it's also a card of planting seeds. So I feel like Spirit's saying that once you are ready to walk away, if you haven't already from this group of people, job, whatever, that when you do, you're going to be ready to take these risks, to plant these seeds in the direction of what your heart's desires are. Okay, thank you. Death, yeah, absolutely. You're having some kind of death of a situation here. Okay, give me more, please. Thank you. Queen of Wands. Is the Queen of Wands, is this deck number three? No. Is there, is Queen of Wands coming in? No. Okay, so it's just the energy. So Spirit's wanting you to take on this Queen of Wands energy. Now, with this Queen of Wands, Queen of Wands is very passionate. Okay, this is a, this is a person who is this this queen knows exactly what she wants she moves towards it she's not having divine protection at this time she knows exactly what she wants she takes this risk and she has hope because in the uh original rider weight she is actually holding a sunflower and the sunflower is representative of hope facing the sun so chin up so it's like spirit saying that you really need to take on this queen of wands energy within this situation if you choose to move away from or walk away whatever the situation is with from this uh, group of people okay spirit give me more please Tell me more about this Queen of Wands. Thank you. Hold on just a minute. It went in the floor. Okay. Reverse or upright? Upright. Nine of Pentacles. Yeah. Absolutely. There's pre-Empress energy. That Okay. So if you step into this Queen of Wands energy, which is very passionate and wanting to really go after your heart's dreams desires and goals okay not knowing how things are going to turn out but just going towards it taking that risk taking that leap of faith like a fool um like the full card i shouldn't say a fool like the full card it's going to bring you into a lot of happiness so not only um are you going to come into a more abundant energy uh, you know, abundance could be money, it could be happiness, you know, whatever. But also, the breadcrumbing is going to stop here. Because the Nine of Pentacles, this is an energy where you take care of yourself first. So, you know, before you even try to give any of your energy away to someone else or another situation. Always making sure you are at your best. So that you can be your best if you help others or whatever. Okay. Could be more, please. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the chariot. See? So it's definitely telling you it is time to move forward, to move away. And that doesn't mean it has to be a literal move, but it can. But move away, walk away, whatever from this group of people, whatever that means for you. Okay, let's go ahead. Spirit, can we go ahead and go on? Can we go here? Okay, thank you. I love it when Spirit takes me out of order. Because actually it is, it's uh, very interesting. 
Spirit, Holy Divine, please give me the top two cards. Top two cards, please. Please tell me when to stop. Top two cards. Now, okay, thank you. Positivity, so keep it positive. Keep moving forward. You see the arrow. Keep going forward. And if you also see the path here, it's straight. It doesn't have a lot of bends and curves. It's straight. You just have to choose to go down that path. And it may not be easy because this could be, you know, close friends. This could be a job you've been at for, you know, 20 years. It may not be easy to walk away. <laughs> See, look, you have another road that's straight. Road to improvement. Can't make this up. Okay, I'm going to go to this Oracle deck and then we'll close. Spirit, Holy Divine, please give me the most important information and guidance. Thank you. Well, what do we have here? We have three. Dear love, be gentle with yourself. You heal with the power of love. See the light in all things. Acknowledge your self-worth and grace. And see, that's this depth card. Finding your value and your importance. Okay, and then we have Cougar, assertive. In silence, you find power. Remember, I told you, you were alone. And there's no way that those people behind you could see you holding that doll. So either some of you are keeping it secret or they're giving you the evil eye just because of the fact you're not or you're not going to be in their vicinity anymore and they can't keep an eye on what you're doing. And so there could be jealousy that comes to play, things like that. Um, but whatever this is that is your heart's dreams, goals, and desires, this is going to be very uh, something very happy for you. So in silence, you find power. Claim your leadership role and take action. You know where to go and what to do. Okay, there's that's the queen of wands. You have the courage and confidence to succeed. I love that. Okay, and then we have Karen, patience. Create a place in nature's stillness and be renewed. Take time alone. Oh, here you go, alone again. Time alone to find balance. Step confidently toward your purpose. Patience will bring you rewards. I just cannot make this up, guys. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to end this here. I uh, hope this really helped you uh, to gain some clarity over this situation. May you have an extremely blessed and lovely uh, week, day, my friends. Bye-bye.